Hi there everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be looking at two new packs from SMC that you are definitely going to want to know about. Now you may or may not have heard of SMC. They have never done anything for FPV drones before, but they do have a huge reputation in RC car racing. In fact, about 90% of the fastest RC car racers on the planet use exclusively SMC packs. So when they reached out to me and asked if we could collaborate on some FPV drone racing packs, I couldn't really say no, and I was very excited to see what they were going to be able to come up with. And boy, have they come up with something, because I honestly would not have believed the performance of these packs unless I'd actually tested them myself. Um, sit down, settle in, you are going to be amazed at what these packs are capable of. If at any point during this video you want to try out these SMC packs for yourself and without giving too much away, that is a strong possibility, then there are links down in the video description to where you can pick them up today and there are affiliate links so they help support the channel. So please do use them if you possibly can. All right, let's start by putting these packs in context by taking some weights and we'll start with the best success pack I've ever tested, the Bonker U2 1380 180C. That weighs 235 grams. The Tattoo R-Line V5 1400, another excellent pack, that weighs 228 grams, so it's 7 grams lighter than the Bonka. The Dogcom MCK V2 1380, this is the best Dogcom pack I've ever tested, comes in at 225 grams, so pretty much the same as the Tattoo R-Line. The SMC 1400 comes in at 212.5 grams, so it's about 12 grams lighter than the R-Line and the Dogcom. If we look at the 1600 milliamp hour now, we'll start with the R-Line 1550 version 5. That comes in at 255.5 grams. The SMC 1600, with a bit more capacity, comes in at 240.7, so that's about 15 grams lighter. And just out of interest, the 1800 R-Line V5 comes in at 284.7 grams, which is just about 45 grams heavier than the SMC, but surely it's not going to be competing with this pack. After all, it weighs 20% more. So let's start with a constant power discharge test. And here I'm taking the packs from absolutely full to completely empty, discharging them at a constant power determined by the nominal voltage of the pack, which is 22.2 volts for a standard LiPo, times 15C. This will empty the pack in about four minutes, which is very typical of an FPV flight. Immediately, I noticed that the SMC packs hold a much, much higher voltage during discharge than any of the other packs that I've tested before. And the difference is huge. It's anywhere from 0.6 to 1.25 volts less battery sag. And that's under exactly the same discharge conditions, same temperature, same power, same everything. That extra voltage that they're holding means that they also deliver a lot more energy. The SMC1400 is delivering about the same amount of energy as the Tattoo R-Line V5 1550, which is a much heavier pack. And the SMC1600 actually delivers more energy than the Tattoo R-Line V5 1800, which weighs about 20% more than it. And the reason that they're able to do this is because when you're holding a much higher voltage during discharge, that means that every milliamp hour that you deliver contains more energy because energy is the milliamp hours times the voltage. And that allows a smaller pack to deliver more energy than a larger pack. Um, it just all comes down to the voltage. If we take the weight of the pack into account by looking at energy density, the difference becomes even bigger because these packs are quite light. They are delivering an energy density of about 1.55 watt hours per gram, which is way more than the best LiPos I've ever tested before. They're about 10.7% better than the best lithium high volt pack, which is the GMB 1300, and about 16.5% better than the best standard LiPo I've ever tested, which is the Tattoo R-Line V5 1480. I mean, they really are sitting out there in a class of their own here. Now let's look at the burst power test results. And here we're doing a 15C constant current discharge for 48 seconds, which will bring the pack to 80% full. And because it's a constant current discharge, um, packs that hold higher voltage actually deliver more power overall. So you tend to see a little bit of a, a kind of compression of the curves there. 
And then we do a 2C per second current ramp. And this means that every second we increase the current demand by 2C. So if it's a 1000 milliamp hour pack, that means we step up two amps per second. Um, for something like this 1400, it's gonna be 2.8 amps per second. And we keep doing that until the battery voltage falls below um, about 19 volts or so. The easy way to read this chart is the packs that last the longest deliver the highest effective C rate. So we can see that both the SMC 1400 and 1600 packs here last by far the longest, much longer than any other pack, even the Bonker, and so are delivering a higher effective C rate. If we plot a bar chart of the effective C rate, we can see the maximum current divided by the rated capacity in this burst test gives the C rate and the effective C rate under my test conditions for these SMC packs is 90 for the 1400 and 94 for the 1600. And that is significantly higher than any pack I've ever tested before. Even the Bonker U2 1380 180C pack um, only achieves about 82C in my test. And these two SMC packs achieve much more than that. So they are delivering more current than anything else um, at an equivalent size. As you would expect, such a high effective C rate has a profound effect on the maximum burst power that these packs are able to deliver. If we're looking at the SMC 1400, it delivers about 2.5 kilowatts under my burst test. And the only pack I've ever tested before that can beat that is the Tattoo R-Line V5 1800 milliamp hour, which weighs like 60 grams more or something mental like that. Um, nothing beats the SMC 1600. It's delivering close to three kilowatts. And I was actually worried during the test that my battery tester, which is only rated to somewhere around three kilowatts burst, was not gonna handle it. Um, fortunately it did, but if SMC bring out anything bigger than a 1600, I don't even know if I'm gonna be able to test its maximum power delivery. It might melt my battery tester. If we're looking at the 1400, because um, I've got more points of comparison for that, it's 11.3% more powerful than the Bonker U2 1380, which is the most powerful 1400 I've ever tested before. And it's about 32.3% more powerful than the Tattoo R-Line V5 1480, which is a bigger, heavier pack, um, but can't deliver anywhere near as much power as the SMC. If we take the weight of the pack into account and we're looking at power density in watts per gram of battery weight, the results get even more silly. 12! The SMC pack is delivered 12 watts per gram. The best pack I've ever tested before was the Bonka U2 1380. Nine and a half. These deliver 12. Uh, yeah, 12. Now let's summarize the testing by looking at the scores. And I create scores by dividing the performance of a pack on a particular metric by the average performance of all the packs I've tested on that metric. This means that a pack that gets a score of 100% is exactly average, a score of 90% is 10% worse than average, and a score of 110% is 10% better than average. Overall, the SMC packs are well above average on all of the three parameters. On energy density, they're around 20% better than average. Power density, anywhere from 65 to 75% better than average. So talking about scores of 165 and 175% on those metrics. And the voltage sag, they're about 2% better than average. And they do score the highest in terms of voltage sag. They're better than any other pack that I've tested on that metric. Overall, when you combine those scores, the total score of these packs is um, just around 130% for the 1400 and about 132% for the 1600. So they're about 30% better than your average pack and probably 25% better than the best pack I've ever tested before. So I imagine we both had the same question on seeing these results. How? How have SMC managed to do this? Well, I actually had the opportunity to sit down with the head battery designer at SMC and go through all the aspects of lithium-ion battery technology and what they had to do 
in order to get the performance out of these packs that they're able to deliver. It's an absolutely fascinating interview. I think you'll really enjoy it. And it's coming out very soon on my channel. So make sure you like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so that you see that video as soon as it's available. Fundamentally, as I understand it, without going into all the detail in the interview, it comes down to the quality of the materials and formulation that go into these packs. SMC are working with probably the best battery manufacturer in the world right now for high C-rate batteries, and they're using their most expensive, highest quality high C-rate formulations for these packs, with all the rare earth elements you could name. The result is that these packs should be really durable as well as high performance, because these materials should be able to withstand multiple charge discharge cycles without degrading, even if you push the packs really, really hard. Now that we've looked at the performance, it's time to talk about pricing and who these packs are gonna be right for. SMC are selling these batteries at the same price as the equivalent Tattoo R-Line V5 packs. And this means that they must be making less money per battery than Tattoo are because they're using a more expensive formulation, but they're selling them for the same price. But I guess that means that you get a higher performing battery at the same cost, so that's pretty good. In terms of who these packs are gonna be right for, um, if you're interested in performance, either because you wanna fly dynamic freestyle or you're interested in racing, then these are the performance champions. Nothing else comes close. They have the highest energy density and the highest power density of any pack that you can buy today for FPV. And that's gonna be key if you're a racing pilot looking for the fastest possible lap time, or you're a freestyle pilot looking for the most dynamic, most exciting freestyle experience. In terms of, uh, if you're someone who's not interested in performance, but is more concerned about price, then the Tattoo R-Line V5s are already kind of up the more expensive end of batteries. So the SMC are gonna be similar. But if performance is what you want, these are the packs to deliver it for you. If you're interested in trying out these SMC packs for yourself today, then I'll put links down in the video description to where you can get hold of them. And they are affiliate links, which means that if you click on them, I do get a small commission, helps support the channel, helps me make more test videos like this for everyone in the FPV community. So please do use those links if you possibly can and help me make more videos like this for all of you guys. That's all I have for you for today. So until next time, I wish you all very, very happy flying.